Welcome to Untold Physio Stories, a podcast that informs and educates by connecting you to rehab industry leaders who share their candid successes and failures in business and practice. This episode of Untold Physio Stories is sponsored by Edge Mobility System. Edge Mobility System is your online site for everything a PT, OT, DC, MT, ATC, or fitness pro would need. Get certified in blood flow restriction therapy or training online. Check out our full modern manual therapy seminars, ISTM toolkit, edge suspension trainer, portable tables, and more. Untold Physio Stories listeners can save 10% by going to edgemobsys.com. That's E-D-G-E-M-O-B-S-Y-S dot com slash untold to save 10% off their first purchase. Edge Health and Tech Solutions. We do websites that work for you and give you an edge over the competition. Did you know that you have less than 10 seconds to capture someone's interest in your website before they click away? How about the fact that most people are accessing your website from their phone? Save thousands and get a fully mobile, appealing, and SEO-optimized website linked to your social media, email list, and Google My Business. All for one low price and no monthly fees. Why not keep doing what you do best in your business and allow us to handle the tech side? Let's get started. Find us at edgehealthandtech.com. Welcome back to Untold Physio Stories. I'm one of your hosts, Dr. E. Uh, Dana Palmer and Andrew Rothschild are doing their own thing. With me today is Dr. Brett Scott. Brett's been on the podcast a couple of times before. He's known as my Padawan. He still doesn't know what that means. Uh, how you doing, Brett? I'm doing good, thanks. All right. Well, we have a shared story today, and this is actually probably a part one of maybe two or three, but I want to talk about a case that uh, I recently saw. Young girl, strength coach, uh, basically over telehealth. She had seen a couple of the practitioners before and also as a strength coach tried to work through um, all the problems that she was having. And to start it off, basically somewhere two, three years ago, uh, I think she was like division one, either soccer player or um, some sort of athlete. And she had really gone nuts on an assault bike. And after that, she kind of developed a lot of hip pain and kind of posterior chain, paresthesia, and some right knee pain. So it's it's been a couple years, and anytime she tried to train any harder than very, very light, um, even when she was kind of demonstrating flexion-type activities like deadlifts or snatches or something to her clients, her symptoms basically flared up, and no matter how much rest she took off, anytime she thought she was ready to start training again, uh, her system was basically too sensitive to get back to even light workouts or any kind of regression from what she would normally be doing. Uh, I found a decent amount of things. She she fit some lumbar patterns. I had her do quite a bit of extensions. Extensions initially flared up her lumbar spine. Then we eventually settled on just doing like a lot of banded hip work and a lot of sciatic sliders, not even tensioners, but a lot of stuff in long sits, alternating, extending her knees with neck extension. And that really seemed to kind of calm her down. Uh, No matter what I tried for her knee, uh, nothing really seemed to desensitize that, even though she had ankle limitations and some tibial IR stuff, things that normally fit the clinical practice patterns that I talk about. Her knee was. I think she, well, she eventually had arthroscopic surgery. So she's still recovering from that, but somewhere along visit two or three, when she, her uh, posterior chain discomfort was uh, improved at least 20 to 30%, which is more than she had improved before. She also told me that there was some just breathing issues and she didn't bring it up before because she just wanted to focus on her lower quarter stuff. But she had told her MD and other MDs in the past that she has difficulty breathing and she just feels like it's locked up. She can't take a deep breath in um, and she felt like her thoracic spine was really tight. And again, as a strength coach, she's doing her 
typical kind of rib rolls and um, lumbar kind of lock rotational stuff. And I found that she had some thoracic and trunk issues. I gave her thoracic whips. That didn't necessarily seem to help. Um, the MDs, unfortunately, kind of dismissed it as anxiety. But, you know, if you would ever meet this girl, she's just so happy-go-lucky, so grateful. It doesn't really kind of fit the pattern, at least that I would be aware of, of an outwardly kind of anxious, very fear, you know, high fear avoidant, centrally sensitized patient. Um, so I thought that I would refer her to... Uh, Dr. Scott, my Padawan, because she's local to that area, because he is an excellent manual therapist. And I thought she's really also complaining quite a bit of a few particular segments in her thoracic spine that she always felt locked out. And, you know, she couldn't target that with extending over a foam roll or thoracic whips. So I thought, hey, you know what, I'm going to refer to Brett and uh, he can do some manual therapy on her and we'll see if that kind of kickstarts the the improvements um and then also as a strength coach and a pt i thought that he would be able to maybe regress a program better than i would be able to so what did you find brett you recently saw her right yeah so i saw her last week and i think this is a good story just because of some of the maybe limitations of telehealth and what you can see and can do versus what we can see in person so um just like you said she came in we looked through her history and what you guys have covered together and basically say, came to all the same conclusions. And upon evaluation of her movement, she did have a pretty locked up thoracic spine, some cervical stuff going on as well. We, the big concern is the breathing. And yeah, like she had said that the doctors were like, well, you just have anxiety and that's why you're having trouble breathing. She's like, I'm having trouble breathing. I'm having anxiety because I'm having trouble breathing. And we're just sitting here talking. And uh, based on an ex-girlfriend of mine that actually worked in orthodontics, I noticed that she had like a palate expander or a retainer under the, the bottom of her, uh, in the bottom piece of her jaw. And the other piece to that was, I was actually just reading a post from Seth Oberst the night before about development of kids and masks and tongue position, how this is going to development developmentally affect them. Now I've never taken one of Seth's courses or anything, but I found it interesting. I kind of thought about that and I had her get on the table and looked at her breathing and, and she's a very educated strength coach as well. And she knows how to breathe diaphragmatically and she's tried to do all the breathing techniques and she was able to execute them with her diaphragm pretty well, but she also had quite a bit of ex excessive, um, you know, accessory muscle breathing going on as well. And I heard her try to breathe and I had her close her mouth and try to do some nasal breathing and she was almost completely blocked up. And, you know, we, we tried to do some things with the, you know, manipulating thoracic spine, manipulating cervical spine. And I was able to get a couple cavitations and such, but the the issue with breathing was still there. Granted, her function had improved within the session, and and we went back and did the whips, and she noticed that there was improvement there. However, there was still this like sensation of not being able to breathe, and um, this is something that I think and that we had talked about that just needs to be referred out to an ENT for long term care because if she has an issue with breathing and we can't we can't fix the source of that issue that this is something that's going to just continue to come up but i just found it interesting in this case that as someone doing telehealth with a patient that's probably something you're never going to see because we don't have access to hd video or would think to look in someone's mouth or be able to see that or even hear them breathing and you could audibly hear kind of like this sinus pattern of of difficulty with nasal breathing so just something interesting that i found and i'm curious to see what happens when she does go to the ent uh, and maybe we can get to the source of the actual issue that's causing the the mobility restrictions there versus just trying to continually manipulate and do these other things that might give her short temporary relief but if there's a true breathing problem here we might never be able to solve that Right. Um, I think you also, though, 
you told me in your case summary, but you forgot to mention on the podcast that she had fractured her nose, right? And that's and she had a deviated septum, and that's why you think that it might be more for an ENT, though, right? And not a fire alley. Yeah, that that was the other piece. So there was definitely restrictions. You could like hear a physical restriction almost with her breathing, but yes, part of that was the deviated septum that she she had broken her nose uh, in in college that she never really had taken care of. Right. So we don't really know, you know, that might just be part of it. Um, and this is a chicken or the egg thing, but I definitely found that interesting because Brett is absolutely right. There are limitations to telehealth and I, I certainly did not look in her mouth. Uh, I saw that she was able to diaphragmatically breathe. I didn't necessarily, uh, I did coach her on using her nose, but I, I wouldn't have seen those things or heard those things or even thought to ask those things um, because it just, wouldn't, it just wouldn't have come across on a telehealth session. So I think that that is really interesting. And that's why this is part one, because that is where we left it. Uh, We conferred for about 20 minutes after the session, and we both agreed that she should see an ENT. uh, But as of yet, we have not heard from her. So, all right, Brett, uh, I'm looking forward. So Dr. Brett Scott is going to be the newest member of the Eclectic Approach faculty. And uh, he is developing a... Uh, basically a barbell, you know, modern barbell therapy or something like that. We haven't quite settled on a name. I'm super excited for it. You want to, you want to talk about it a little bit, um, plug it and uh, yeah, anything sure. else you want to plug? Sure. So yeah, the course we're going to create is based on essentially clinical rehab for fitness athletes and working at continuing to progress someone from a rehab type setting back to full potential within barbell movements. So squat, bench press, deadlift, the Olympic lifts, and um, other variations and typical fitness-related injuries that can tend to be missed sometimes if we're not looking for them and we don't know the demand. So we're going to go through kind of a reverse engineered uh, evaluation of looking at why an injury could occur with barbells and what the things I tend to see as someone who works primarily with barbell based athletes of what we can do to keep that person performing those exercises and keep them at a high level because most, most strength athletes or fitness athletes aren't going to stop just because you tell them to stop. So being able to, you know, more synchronously have a rehab approach where we can integrate barbell training into it and teach clinicians, ATs, DCs, PTs, strength coaches, fitness professionals, whoever they may be, how to integrate more barbell training into a rehab type setting. So uh, I'm looking forward to getting this all going and I'm excited to be part of this. And um, yeah, if people want to look for me or have any questions or any any comments or what they would like to see from a course like this, uh, feel free to reach out. So my website is barbelltherapyandperformance.com. You can email me at brett, that's B-R-E-T-T, at barbelltherapyandperformance.com, or check out our Instagram at barbell.therapy. And that's all for me. Awesome. I am looking forward to it. Come a long way since uh, we shot that modern strength training course at Andy's place where I was uh, just bugging you the whole time by stepping behind oh, yeah. you getting my steps. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of that the other night. Um, that, that's still pretty funny. I was telling someone that story the other day of just Urson walking in place in the background. And I I still got a lot out of the course, but I just remember Urson just competing with his wife the whole time. Oh, yeah. we My family is super competitive with steps. And my, my goal is always to get 10,000 steps before I run or work out at, in the evening. And, uh, you know, when you're manning the camera for eight hours a day, it's hard to get those steps in. And Brett had turned around and gave me this weird look. So <laughs> to physically troll him, I actually walked right up to the back of his chair and just kept on stepping and stepping and stepping. Yeah. So he took it pretty well. Yeah. I think that's why we have this relationship now. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. That's actually why we're such good friends. Yeah. <laughs> he, he probably could have punched me. Another person might have punched me, but uh, Brett's a good guy. All right. Looking forward to the course and having you on the team. Thanks for having me. Well, you can find me, uh, Dr. E, at Modern Rehab Mastery. That's our new online mentoring program. 
It includes modern manual therapy, modern patient education, and modern strength training. It's three months with three mentors, so one month with each mentor, four weeks, tons of modules, lots of CEUs, learn at your own pace for a month, then move on. Um, so go beyond the seminar. You also get chat room um, with your mentees and mentors and live Q and A's every week. Check out all my products, Edge Mobility System. We have the new Edge ISTM toolbox that includes the Edge Mobility Star and the OG Edge Mobility tool, our Edge Restriction System BFR cuffs. That's part of Dr. Kyle Coffey's Modern Strike Training BFR certificate. Uh, I hope to see you at a live eclectic approach course soon. That's Modern Manual Therapy. Um, in U.S., Canada, and South America. And uh, make sure to rate Untold Physio Stories five stars on Apple Podcasts. You could also subscribe on Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. And as always, you guys have an awesome day.